And people say, well, you know, golf is just, you just need to work on, you know, it's a skill thing. It's a technique-based uh, pursuit. Yeah, it's a very much a technique-based pursuit. But all things being equal, okay, like let's say the, the two of you uh, young ladies, because they're close in age and, and close in size, if you have the same physical abilities, what's going to be the one thing that could push you, one of you, further than the other? It's training. It's what you do supplementally beyond just simply playing the game, you know, grooving those, those neural patterns and improving your, your body's efficiency in producing the types of body mechanics that are most productive for you. The only way that you can push past what that is is what you do off the course in the gym, elsewhere. Now, for those of you who's like, yeah, that's, that's great for, uh, you know, young people that are actually you know, interested in a competitive outlet for golf, but how does that relate to me? It's like, well, how do you arrive at each hole? You know, are, are you feeling fresh? You know, do your ankles hurt? Do your knees hurt? Shoulders hurt? Low back? All of those kinds of things. You can increase your enjoyment, and usually when you increase performance, you increase enjoyment because, hey, that looks good. This is easier to justify all of the, the time and money I'm spending out here. And you can improve all of those things through improving yourself physically. So when uh, you hear Tom say periodically that this is an athletic process, you heard uh, Tom use that phrase last night a couple of times. What he means is, is that uh, that which is true for other athletes in other you know, disciplines of athletics is also true for those of, of I was almost said those of us, I'm, I'm this close to golf, but I'm not among you. I, I wish you all well. That's why I'm here. But everything that uh, a person can do to improve athletic performance in any other sport also carries over in, into the realm of golf. Now, why, why don't we do that besides the, I know it, it's time consuming and, and no one likes to exercise, but have any of you ever been told anything negative about, well, just, I'll use the weightlifting example, lifting weights or resistance training in relationship to golf? Have you ever heard that that's a bad thing? Have you ever been led to believe that that's a bad thing? Use your flexibility. Okay, exactly. Yeah, I don't want to get tight. Have you ever heard that? Okay, some of us are old enough to remember there was a term once upon a time called muscle bound. As though you can go to the gym and suddenly just psh, to the point where, oh goodness, I cannot move. Man, when I was a kid, I dreamed of being muscle bound. Are you kidding me? But the idea of losing flexibility, do you need a certain amount of resilience in your body to effectively deliver force to the ball? 100%, you certainly do. And you don't want to do anything that compromises your ability to do just that. But a strong muscle is a flexible muscle. One of the reasons we get tight is because we're not using that which we're carrying around with us. It is disuse that uh, promotes tightness and inflexibility more than almost anything else. And there is a, uh, we'll, we'll take that, um, that notion of flexibility further. Should you be flexible? To play, to play golf. Will, will that help you? Okay, now if I ask it like that, we're all kind of, yeah, yeah, it's, that sounds right. So how do you get flexible? What is it? What's, what's, if, if I say, explain flexibility to me or give me an example of a flexible person, what are they? What, what are they doing in your mind that suggests flexibility? Relaxed. That's interesting. That's more of a high concept thing. Um, so you kind of equate uh, being loose or supple with relaxation. I agree with that, absolutely agree with that, but in a physical sense, you know, just a, a physical state of, of being, what do you see when you think of that, that flexible person? Range of motion. Range of motion, Ex excellent way to describe that, you know. Uh, do you kind of think about uh, a little Russian girl on a balance beam, like touching her feet behind her head and things like that? Because um, I kind of do. But. Uh, that's because the intro of Wide World of Sports, it was like that footage of old Corbett, she's on the beam, never mind. That was just my childhood. In any event, a lot of people think that, you know, okay, I, I just popped out of the car, I'm at the driving range, and, <laughs> and they start doing all of, all of this stuff. And one of the things that, uh, and the idea is fine, the idea is correct. Yeah, you want to be able to move right. You want to be able to move comfortably. 
but we typically approach the idea of flexibility or, or loosening up the wrong way. We typically approach it from the standpoint of tissue elasticity versus joint mobility. What's that mean? Basically, all, all of this stuff, you know, your, your, your musculature, we all, we all come with the, the, the same muscles, they're all there. Um, it's, not, it's not that, oh, you know, my hammies are tight. That, that's, that's my problem. No, it's, it's not that you've got a, a tight hammy. You may have a tight hammy, but that, that's not your issue. What, what you need is to have mobility throughout all of your skeletal architecture. That's the name of the game. So when Kirby says range of motion, yeah, he's absolutely right. Range of motion through all of the joints. How do you get it, or how do you improve range of motion? You strengthen the connective tissue. It means you, you move around. The more you move, the easier it is for you to move. Pretty uh, logical when you think about it. When we start to baby something, well, I've, I've got kind of a, a sensitive knee, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay off that. Oh, that'll make it better. I said that sarcastically. It won't make it better. It will have just the opposite effect. We've all heard the phrase, use it or lose it. it it's true in a lot of contexts. It's 100% true in the context of, of you and successfully operating your body the way that you want your body to operate. Okay? So, thinking about how to uh, get your body to do what you want, you've got to make it move. And one of the other things that is huge is you have to think in terms of quality of movement. Now I'm talking in the context of supplementing what you do with, with your golf practice, okay? There are, there are the mechanics, you're just drilling them, you're gonna drill them some more, awesome. But when it comes to the other stuff, the kind of boring stuff, the mundane things, you know, exercises, we don't really think about exercise as anything except something that Gillette said we got to do and I'm just going to get through it and man, I'm glad that's over because that was un uncomfortable and boring. Very few people approach exercise in terms of cultivating good movement, healthy movement, non-injurious movement, movement that just frankly looks good. Um, I'm not a golfer, but I love watching golf done well. If, uh, if it's not done well, then it makes me sad. But when I, when I watch pros play, I love the body mechanics. I can watch almost any sport and just kind of get caught up in people who move beautifully, skillful movement. And it happens in every sport. It happens in powerlifting. I can pick out a beautiful deadlift. What? That's just like a... 800 pound guy just like, like that off the floor. How's that beautiful? It's like, if it's all done correctly, it is. You know, body's an amazing adaptive organism and it's capable of a lot of cool things. And beautiful movement is one of those. And you need to think, not just when you are working on your, your golf mechanics, but anything that you might do supplementally for improvement of those mechanics needs to be good quality movement. A combination of efficiency, safety, and just quality. Because everything that you do physically is training yourself. If you're sitting on the couch all day, you are training yourself to be really good at sitting on the couch every day. If you are a runner, why I don't know, but if you are a runner, because I'm a recovering runner, um, then you need to focus on good quality movement. Because can you run wrong? Have, have you seen people that, oh, I'm out, I'm, I'm jogging, I'm, I'm doing good things for myself, but you look at them, it's like, it's a train wreck. It's like you can literally hear the cartilage being ground out of their knees because their body mechanics are so compromised. So yeah, you can do things which on the surface seem productive, but are not really helping you all of that much. You know, everything that you do, whether, I mean, if you're a walker and you walk just to improve uh, body composition and uh, keep the metabolism where you want it, you can walk right and you can walk not so right. Everything that you do can look either good and safe and efficient or it can look like a train wreck. We don't want to be the train wreck. We want to be the opposite of that. 